Well, explain to us why you're mad. What Mike said. What Mike said, I got five kids. I don't got no five kids. <laughs> I don't I got, I got, I got no five kids. I, 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 I didn't have a sex with, with no other women. I ain't get the woman pregnant. You sure you ain't adopt them? No. I ain't doing nothing. I don't know, like Candy. I think you got me ready to tell my mom about nah, this one. Uh -huh. You nah. sure you, yeah, yeah, you sure. don't have five kids? Yeah, I'm sure. Because oh, Mike said he did. No, I'm positive. How positive are you, Constance? Real, real positive, man. I'm 100% positive. Hey, dude, dude, let me see a picture of your kids. No, I don't get the kind of kids. Well, believe me, look, I have no Let me see your wallet. Uh, you got five no, kids. Three boys and kids. two girls, he told me. No, oh, he, he, he told you that? Yep. I don't got no three boys and two girls. What's your son's name? I don't have no sons, man. I don't, I don't, I don't, I don't have no daughters. I don't know what he's talking about, Ron. Well, Ron heard from Mike that you had five kids. And you just heard Mike himself say, yeah, you got five no, kids. No, 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 I don't. Didn't he just say that? He said that, but no, 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 I don't. Well, why would Mike lie to us? He lied to you, man. You're not lying to us, Constantine. No, right? I'm not lying to the lion. You paying child support? No. Uh-uh. That's no. why you denying that you don't have no kids. Right, because I don't Because you ain't paying no child support. I don't you don't want them to kids. come look for you. No, I, I don't have kids, Ron. Uh-huh. For real. No horseplay. No pussy, no jack, no nothing. No pussy, no nothing. No nothing. 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 Here he comes. Yo, you, made it out. you got a, you, you, you got something explaining to do, man. I don't got five kids. Why'd you bring it up? I thought you had five no, kids. No, no, no. I don't have five kids. And here's the kicker, he's not even paying child support for him, he said. Oh, you're not paying child support? I don't have kids. But you got three kids? I, no, I don't have kids. I don't, period. Don't have kids. Wow. But Mike says you do. Three no, boys No, and Denise two girls. told me that you were telling her that you, your kids are almost grown. No, lying, no. I ain't say nothing about kids on that, that night. Nothing. Oh, you weren't. No! You were talking to her about your kids? No, I don't have kids! Three boys and two kids? girls? No, I hey, don't have kids. kids! I don't have kids! I don't have kids, period! Three oh, boys and two oh, girls! Period! I don't <laughs> have kids! Oh, you don't have any kids? No! Period! I don't know what people are talking about! Are they all about the same girl? Look, Ron, I, I, I never had sex before, man. Never? 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 Did you adopt them? No, man, we, we, we put this <laughs> right there, man. All right, look out. All right, let it go. Look, look out of the camera. Look out of the camera. All right, man, we, we, we really break that. All right, calm down. <laughs>what's up man it's uh tuesday everything's all fucked up because uh of the president's day thing you know i was off on presidents well uh, yeah i was off anyway i'm about three uh vodkers in sat in a hot tub to the point where i have to be drinking water and shit too right now because uh you know i'm gonna be uh a little sloppy tonight my nose is all shiny and shit here uh, anyways, God, I look old as fuck, but what are you going to do? I'm a classic. Uh, you know the number, 513-813-7979, uh, uh, and uh, what you do is you call that, the phone call, stop by, stop. What up? Hey, what's up, buddy? What are you doing, man? Man, I'm having me some a couple bit of frosties. I'm over here, got the, got the knees up, the legs up on the desk. Good for the sciatic, a little essence salt bath, you know, just hanging out, man. Listen to you, man. You're, you're wait, a good wait, guy. Wait, you're at your desk and having an Epsom salt bath? No, that happened earlier. Oh, oh, oh. for the sciatic, for the sciatic, if you know what I'm saying, man. Well, you're you're no in the joke. bath. You're in the bath right now. No, I'm actually kicked up in my office with my oh. feet on the desk. I heard oh. you talk about drinking vodka, and I had to call you. Oh man, <laughs> I was drinking vodka in the hot tub. That wasn't a good idea. 
but whatever. Man, I'm sure you felt a little bit of wobbly when you got fatigued there, didn't you? I did. I got wobbly when I was I was getting out and I was putting on my bathrobe and I was like, ooh, 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 ooh. was it good? Oh man, I'm sure you. Just, I'm sure I would have chugged a glass of water for sure, real well, quick. I got one here, and I'm gonna be taking one to bed too because uh, yeah, I, I gotta be in good uh, good standing for tomorrow. Yeah, <laughs> yeah you gotta get ready for the morning. You yeah, gotta get ready for the morning. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah, I got, it, I got, I got to tell you, I got to tell you, I probably wasn't your biggest fan not too long ago. I actually called you. Uh, it was probably like midsummer of last year. Uh, I, was, I was talking about I'm the Tyler the Facebook guy and how I was like dogging on you, how you're hating other other people. But man, I got to tell you, like you, you kind of grew on me after the like the last year. I hear you with like Stuart Penrose. You're over there. You're over doing your legal things too, and you you, got, you cracked me up, man. You won me over. I got to tell you. There's no more hate on this side, and just know I love you. You're a good guy. See, that's a smart dude right there. Everybody, pay attention. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Not not too many people come back from that and come back and. No, I, mean, I got roasted. I think I See, think that, Thomas was around and he, that's he not, roasted me for it. That's not true. Uh, every, I mean, I've worked everywhere. I mean, look, you're just, you're the same as a lot of other places, man. That's why I don't get worked up when people call up and scream and yell because. Uh, I, I'm, I'm, you know, I'm used to it. Trust me. Look at this shit. I'm sure, I'm sure you are. At that time, I was like, man, why are you making? Why is he like all the blonde-headed bimbos? <laughs> like, why? <laughs> no, I, that's kind of that's kind of how how I was. But you know, like I've I've been doing my own commercial thing here, and I've been doing my thing. I've been I've been kind of exploding on Facebook a little bit out in Northern Kentucky, and I've just been doing what I do and. It's kind of caught the eye of some people, and I get out there and make money just being myself. And listen, listening to you in the mornings really gets me going. And I'm not even a fan of the music, but I'll, I'll listen to the Kid Chris show just to tune in, and I go on with my day. But yeah, I just want—I really want to What's apologize your, for being what, a no, complete don't apologize. jackass. No, no apologize. Like I said, I'm used to it. What do you? What's your music? Country? I don't do any music. I'm kind of like a comedy guy. I like uh, to do like a little bit of stand up. I've done that. No, I know, past. but you, you said you don't like our, our you don't like the radio station's music. What is your mute your go to? <laughs> um, I mean, I like a little bit of everything. I'm, I wouldn't necessarily. I'm like a diehard rock fan. I, I kind of grew up listening to Metallica from my dad. We play Metallica. In my family. <laughs> I, I love Metallica. <laughs> I love Metallica. But my family kind of ruined it for me as a kid because they, they can't sing for nothing and they're just fucking idiots. So, like, I would be trying to go to bed and get ready for school the next morning and they're out there just acting a fool. So I kind of, like, hated it for it. But, I mean, once what I got do, by myself and... What do you do for work? Kind of way, I, I kind of enjoy it a little bit, but I'm not. it's not like my go-to, you know? What do you do for work? You're at work now? Um, I do a little bit of everything, man. Like, uh, I, I actually started a moving company um i kind of do that on the side with me and a buddy of mine who kind of went into business together and i also manage a cleaning company and i do commercials on the side for like local businesses like nky bargain outlet uh, i've done some stuff for like discount depot something like in the past i've done some for a construction company just acting full, pretty much acting like chris farley is what i'm doing out there just acting a complete asshole <laughs> And, and and people come in, they they were buying things, and some things are just kind of you know just it just depends on what's rolling that week. But yeah, I'm I'm, I'm like I'm kind of new at it. I've been about a year into it, but something I really like to do. I played a burglar in a security company too. Um, but yeah, I'm just trying to get some more of that. Eventually, if not, just do it because I like it. I like to make people laugh, and that's just who I am. All right. Well, I appreciate it, man. Thanks for calling. All right. Absolutely, bud. I just want to tell you I'm sorry. I know you hear it all the time, but fuck it. At least you hear it from this time, from the title of Facebook guy. All right. Fuck it. He said, fuck it. That's right. <laughs> fuck it. Who day? I'm sure you hear that for the last two weeks. Jesus. Yeah. All right, dude. <laughs> well, 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 thanks, man. All right, buddy. See you. Right. Bye. Hey, look. Bear tits. Hey, look. Bear tits. <laughs> Uh, so during that call, I tapped it on the mic for everybody. Okay. I didn't want to be re uh, rude and just, uh, hang up on him and stuff. You know, we don't want to be rude. The guy was in the middle of apologizing. 
You see the phone number there. It is uh, 513-813-7979. When the uh, phone call stop, I stop. Now, that guy called. Are we going to stop? Let me turn the phone on here so we can hear it. Because I'll just fucking bounce. And I'll just have a few more of these and watch uh, TV. I hadn't, I didn't watch The Bachelor last night. Or The Bachelorette last No, The Bachelor last night. Because... Um, I totally forgot because the day off and shit, I got all fucked up, so I missed it. But it's on Hulu, and I want to watch it, uh, but I had to come down here and do this. Now it's simple. We are, what, uh, 10 minutes in. I could easily just <laughs> this thing uh, with the phone call stopping and uh, just go back upstairs and watch uh, The Bachelor. I'm cool with that. So uh, that's something that you have to decide. Fuck you too. Mm-hmm. For real. So, so either the phone phone call stop or I stop. So 513-813-7979. That's the uh, phone number. Oh, shit. It's going to happen, isn't it? Isn't it? I don't dance. I, I work. work. I don't, I don't play, play. I, I play. play. I don't walk. I strut, 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 and then you sashay. Okay. Oh, this guy out here is good. I bet you won't cut it. You're scurred. Uh, mm. Man, I had stuff all planned on here, too. Like this dude. Uh, I got this a while ago, but this is a. Uh, well, actually, I guess this works. Hey, wet spot, dude. You're in Philly, right? Hello? Uh, outside of Philly. Um, I was calling because last time uh, we spoke, I was sending you pictures of the uh, alleged skin tag on my dick. Yes. I wanted to give you an update. Oh, yeah. Tell us about your skin tag. It wasn't a skin tag, Chris. That was a, a genital wart. So I uh, embarrassingly walked into the uh, local Planned Parenthood. Um <laughs> And it turns yes, it turns out it's one of the many. Listen, still laugh at me, Chris. Listen, there's many versions of uh, HPV out there, and I happen to contract one from men, one of the uh, uh, plus Guys. size ladies. I, I enjoy <laughs> no plus size ladies I like to sleep with. Mm-hmm. Um, if you remember, before, wet spot guy came from Mrs. Uh, wet spot, and she is still with me. Oh wait a minute! So you know who it came from? I'm not sure who it came from, but Mrs. Wet Spot knows that I have it, and she didn't seem deterred. Um, so we're still together. You know why she didn't uh, seem deterred? Because she has it, and she's like, well, I can't catch it twice. Yes, I'm fine with that. She's my best friend. I'm going to marry it. I'm going to marry that big old lady. Well, is it like the HPV stuff is, uh, it's like everywhere, but now they have a vaccine for it that they tell you, like I have daughters, they tell you to give it to your daughters early. Yeah, 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 that's what she was saying. She doesn't like, like, she's one of those, like, anti-vaccine people, not just about, like, COVID, but for everything. Yeah. I'm like, yeah, give it to your daughter. You, she, I mean, her daughter probably had, her kids probably have it. She was, Whoa. she was a loosey, she was a loosey-goosey back in the day, if you know what I mean. How old are her daughters? Uh, she has a son that's 15, her daughter's 14. But she's uh, one of those broads that were, she was just throwing her mouth everywhere around in high school, if you know what I mean. Oh, this is the, uh, the you, night show. Yeah, she was giving everyone head. You like that, though? <laughs> it's hot. It's honestly just, <laughs> seriously. Listen, you, I'm, a, I listen I, I'm, you, I'm a big fat gentleman. And yeah. uh, sometimes, like, her kids are at the house a lot. So, uh, their dad does his best, but he's not very good at being a dad. Anyway, they're at the house a lot, so we don't get the fuck. Um, but some like in the morning, like we're real quiet. Like I have her whisper stories in my ears about how she got fucked by like these huge cocks. I jerk myself off. Yeah, I yeah. love it. That's what I was gonna ask. I was like, do you tell? So she tells you? Does she tell you stuff like uh, like being double teamed and shit? Uh, she's never been double teamed, and she's like, she's it's weird. She's like. She was like a, she's kind of a Bible beater a little bit, but she, a total whore on the other but end. That's and what she, happens. She how to talk sexy. I have to draw it out of her. I'm like, oh yeah, I'm like, oh yeah, what happened? She's like, one time on this camping trip, and like, there's like these two boys there, and I, yeah. 
I was bored, so I sucked them off. I'm like, yeah. well, how big were they? How how big were they? Like, God. how did it start? See, that sucks because I, I I wish more girls were bored around me, right? <laughs> That's what I was thinking too. She went to a bigger high school than I did. It was, it's really weird. Like, I'm, I'm not even making this up. Like, I like I, I grew up in like a small high school, but I worked at like I had like, I was 14 at a dishwashing job yeah. at a, a restaurant that was probably. 10 miles away from my house. My grandmother was the general manager. So I went to this restaurant. Like it was in the middle of like, there's like three other school districts. And like when I was 14, the guy she was quote unquote dating when she was 14 was working with me. He was my same age. And he's the first guy that I ever like smoked. He, he like showed like, I never smoked pot before. Yeah. And he was such a nice kid. He's like, uh, I don't want to say his name, but anyway, he was like, yeah, man, come up behind the dumpster. I want to smoke pot. Meanwhile, I'm getting stoned and I, I think I'm not even sure what's going on. Meanwhile, 20, 30 years later or earlier, like my girl, like my the woman I'm about to marry was blowing him. <laughs> it's, such, like, it's such a small world. <laughs> <laughs> so, oh, so you're going to marry her? Yeah, I'm going to marry her. She's my best friend. Right, right, right. I don't no. care if she's. Yeah, she was a whore when she was 17. I don't care. Dude, listen. That's the thing. You know, there's guys that I know that would get jealous. Well, actually, it's been a while, but that would get jealous of, like, exes and shit. But, like, I could never do that. Because what am I, what am I going to get jealous of somebody who has a past before me when all I did was fucking put my dick in everything, you know, coming up? That was it. So what am I? Who am I gonna fucking t- say? You know, you know what I mean. So I don't I, ask. I, I understand completely. Like, yeah, I, I said, I mean, it turns me on. She tells me like these slutty stories. I'm like, oh really? You did that? I mean, what? let's be. What happened? Yeah, right. I always, put my, I always put my mind in the other guy's situation. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh my god, like yeah. Do, do you say? I, I grew up like you, I, I grew up. My family was like, if, I, if you, you stick your dick in a girl, you better marry her type yeah. thing. And I was like, and I went, I ended up friend zoned until I, was, I lost my virginity. I was like. I think I was 21 when I lost my virginity because of that. Yeah, mine was 18. But she was like... Uh, mine was 18. My, I was 18 years old because I was nice to people. Exactly. Yeah. That's how I ended up in the fucking friend zone. And then, yeah. like, when I... Uh, like, I, I... Yeah, I don't know. I stopped fucking uh, being friendly with them and started getting handsy and finally worked out. But, yeah, then... It's just really weird because it's like... The cool guys in high school were the guys fucking getting head and finger blasting my, the woman could be my wife. You know what yeah. I mean? <laughs> so you win. You win. <laughs> yeah, ultimately, yes. Because they, uh, so, they put, they, they uh, put her through training camp and now you get the pro. Absolutely. God. So do you, you, well, do, you do you say to her like you're laying in bed and you're, and you're jerking off? She's telling you these stories. Do you say stuff like, uh, where did where did the cum go? Where did the cum go? Uh, I, well, I never ask her where the cum went because I know she's a swallower. <laughs> I do ask her. Um, <laughs> I know where it went. <laughs> um, but I'm just like, now, like, oh, how, did, how did he get you? Like, what did he do? And she's like, oh, I don't know. Like I said, she, she was a... She she was raised by her grandma, so yeah. she was taught like don't let boys touch your vagina. So that means that means but, go out and let every boy touch the vagina. No, that means fucking suck their dicks. So oh. that way they stay happy with you, and they don't have to touch your vagina. Oh, I see. Yeah, okay, makes sense. Yeah, so yeah, she sucked a ton of cock, and then like, and then uh, eventually like, she ended up she uh, met up her my. My stepkid's dad apparently he has a hog because he's a fucking idiot, but she married him and had yeah. two kids with him. And I still ask her, I'm like, well, how, you know, how'd that happen? You know, blah, 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 blah. She yeah. said, one, time, one time he, we were, he bet me over the, the deck and yada, yada, yada. I was like, oh, holy shit. So wait a minute. So you, you, you jerk off to your, your fiance telling you stories about how her ex fucked her? Yeah, dude, it's hot. That's, that's awesome. You know what? But she probably is turned on by your confidence where you're like, you know what? This guy doesn't get jealous. Nothing. Yeah. Well, yeah. She, she's never expressed that to me, but yeah. No, that's why. And then again, she probably has a thought in her mind that she gave me HPV, so yeah. she might feel a little bit guilty. That's all right. No, no, no. That's hard. You know what? Couple, I'm, uh, I'm turned out by your confidence. Can I blow you? 
Sure. I, I make her put on a uh, mustache and uh, goatee wig. <laughs> but no, let's see. Um, I was you're gonna say, but you're the, a creep. Uh, the, the H- <laughs> yeah, I am. I'm definitely, she'll tell you I'm definitely a creep. <laughs> I even, dude, I do this shit too. Like, I wake up in the morning, like, I'm a fucking horny. I'm hard, day eh? morning wood. Yeah. And so I wake up and I'm like, I don't want to say her name. I'm like, hey, babe. And like, I start like touching her tits and shit. Yeah, yeah. I know she loves it. She yeah. has really sensitive nipples. And I start whispering to her, like, I wanted to teach you about good touches and bad touches. And do you do and that thing? Do you first. do that thing where you twist them a little bit? You go, what's up? Like, what's up? Yeah. What's up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the back, like she she sleeps with her her back towards me at first, then she rolls over. Yeah, yeah. And she sleeps in like a wife beater. Her fucking big tit pops out. I start mm. sucking on it. Yeah, yep. ah. yeah, it is. You're a good man. Thank you, Chris. <laughs> I, hey, I, back to the the original part of the conversation. I just wanted to point out. Yeah. Um, if any of you gentlemen out there with little like weird things popping up on your shaft, hey, go to the plan. Don't be, feel embarrassed. Feel ashamed. It's fine. Everyone does it. There's a couple of drops of some kind of acid shit that goes away. Yeah. It's well, not as bad as... Uh, well, well listen, the- from what I learned, because, you know, I have girls and stuff, and watching those TV commercials and shit, that, uh, uh, that HPV stuff is everywhere. But the problem is, is uh, uh, girls will get, like... Uh, uh, cancer with the within the uh, uh, the ovaries and all that shit. So that's that's what sucks. It's always it's always it's always something gross that more than likely guys spread to girls, and then uh, and then they get fucking something horrible. Like they get their body gets ravaged with cancer and shit. And we just go uh, whatever, and then we keep raw dogging everybody. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's yeah. fucked up. Uh, yeah, uh, a part of it is like you got to think about like women. A lot of them squat, but they're sitting on the same toilet seats, and it's 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 a it's a virus. So it, it's yeah. just like coronavirus. Like it's 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 not hard to catch. But yeah, um, yeah what I was going to say, what happens in men is what ha- um, the 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 most prominent thing, like you said, it was happens in women. It creates cancer in them, but like men get it in their throat after X amount of years or whatever. Mm. That's the big thing. So if you're getting like constant sore throats and stuff, you feel nodule. Go get hurry up, go get checked out. Like oh, don't shit. put that shit off. Oh no. Yeah, I love <laughs> eating pussy. Yeah, you know, that's the beauty of uh, of uh, girls like in high school that, that didn't fuck me and stuff is because uh, I didn't catch anything. You can't catch something you don't. You know, it doesn't just fall in your lap. You know, you got to earn it. I got chlamydia twice yeah. though. Yeah, I, I, I know that. You went to the... I'm bar- you, you, walk of shame. You, to, you didn't even walk of shame. You, you're paranoid. Oh, my God, my dick's going to fall oh, off. Oh, fuck. I was on my <clears> way... <throat> I'll, I'll never forget, on my way to the Monday morning staff meeting uh, at the radio station, and I just moved to Wichita, so I was still driving the uh, T95 van because uh, I didn't have my vehicle there yet. And I was driving up there, and I remember being at the stoplight, and and I was like, "God damn!" I felt like I peed, but I didn't shake it all out. And I pulled my yeah. dick, I pulled my dick out, and I squeezed it, and all this this green pus came out of the top. And I was like, "Oh <laughs> shit!" And I all through the staff the staff meeting, I just was in a daze, like I caught something from some fucking listener girl. And and then uh, the one woman that I was friends with in Kansas. I told her about it, and she goes, "Man, we gotta fuck. We gotta take you to Planned Parenthood." And I remember sitting there, and it was all these fucking like families and shit, and they were there for oh, I don't know who knows what, but they're all. It was a fuck. It smelled like bo in the place and shit. And I walked in, and this uh, doctor lady goes, "Okay, what's going on?" I said, "I think I caught something." She goes, "All right, let me see." She, I'm laying on the table. She pulls out my penis, and, and she goes. Oh yeah, it looks like you have chlamydia. Let me let me test it. And she held my my stuff up. Well, I shouldn't hold it with my fist. So she took my with two fingers. She held up my penis, my Irish dick, and she took this long fucking like a uh, swab and put it down my dick, and then pulled it out to get a sample. And I was like, holy shit! And I told her, I go, look, this is like fucking scared straight. I don't know what the fuck's going on, but that's it. I'm not. I'm not gonna leave here without a rubber, and uh, and they said they would call me if it was something serious, and uh, I never got a call. But she said it's probably chlamydia. And I got, you know, like uh, uh, whatever. Antibiotics. Yeah, yeah, antibiotics, and it went away, and all that. And I went, I went right back to work. 
<laughs> you, you, you gotta put the work in, Chris. I never. I banged with rubbers for a long, long time after that. Um, there was one girl that at a bar gig. She was married, and we were out by the fire pit, and we made out and shit. And then I put, kept, you know, doing the finger thing. And then uh, she came to my place, and to, to, to give you an idea of how young I was, it was probably 1999, and I banged her eight times in my house. And she was you banged her eight times. Yeah, she was the only one without a condom, and uh, it was all cool. You know, nothing happened, all that shit. But then, right after that, like a week later, I started dating my girlfriend at the time. And uh, I blew her off and all that shit. And then I moved to Sacramento. Then, in uh, Sacramento, my girlfriend from Wichita was like, this sucks. I'm moving back to Kansas. And then I just went right back to work and I caught chlamydia again. <laughs> two-time champion. Yeah, I was two a two-time time champion. champion. Yep. Oh, I, I remember telling the doctor what it was. I was like, he goes, well, let me take a look. And then I was like, I know what it is. I've been, I've fucking seen this movie before. <laughs> and uh, and then he checked, and I showed him, and I was, he's like, Yeah, all right, we'll get you antibiotics. You know, and then... <laughs> the antibiotics. <laughs> <laughs> that was. So I was going to say, like, um, mm. well, with the HPV thing, like they say, it could cause throat cancer in men. I was just like, Well, listen, my 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 mom died of cancer when she was, I don't know, fifty nine. My Dad died of a heart attack when he was 51. Mm -hmm. If I die from eating pussy, that's a win for me. That, that is a win. You're right. It's better than gripping your fucking chest and falling down a flight of stairs. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Chris. I won't take up any more of your time, no, buddy. You, a, uh, have good a good call. night. Good call. All right. Thank later. You. Later. See ya. <laughs> I don't even know that dude's name. I just have him on the phone thing here. It's wet spot, dude. Uh, sadly, I always tell the truth on this fucking thing. Now, earlier, while like I was talking, I was pointing at a clip or at a guy in a chat room. And it looked like uh, my friend Kenny from Syracuse was on here, but he's probably afraid to call. Kenny is a fucking genius. He's one of the funniest motherfuckers on the planet. But, uh, he's an asshole. <laughs> I grew up with, well, I'm good friends with his brother, but I was, uh, you know, I grew up around his family. Actually, the prank call I play on the radio, uh, is of, uh, his dad, uh, Mr. Adams, where I call him as the guidance counselor and shit. That's his dad. But man, I'll tell you that, um, Kenny, it someday maybe I'll get Kenny on next week because we're running short on time to talk about the shit. Uh, all right. you're on the air. Hello. Hey, buddy. How the you air. doing? The air. Should I say you're on the air or on the internet? <laughs> the air. Or or go. I'll just pick up and go. Hi, you're allowed to say fuck. What's up, fucker? Who is it? Who do you think it is? It's your buddy Gordy from Chittenango. Oh. Oh shit, Gordon's up, been man? Gordon's been in the room when I've banged chicks. Oh, I, I, I've taken pictures. <laughs> Big fat sweat hogs. I was thinking oh. about that the other day, man. Yeah, we won't uh, say her name, but she's a radio DJ from Jersey, DC. Oh yeah, yeah. I, big girl. Dude, I think she's dead. You think she died from cancer? Well, I mean, the last thing I heard was that she was sick of it. It's sick from it. And then I never yeah. heard. Yeah, and then she's gone. But yeah, her name was DC. What? She was on uh, a station in Jersey. Oh fuck! I mean, yeah, and her her profile picture on the website did not match. The not even close. The here, here, not this, even close. This man. is the funny story. She used to call in to the California radio show and yeah. just flirt like crazy and all that shit. And it was like, man, this chick is DTF. So yeah. I flew to New York City, and I met with Gordon there. You yeah, know, listen. she picked us up at the airport. Yeah, we were coming down the escalator, and she goes, I'll pick you up. And Gordon yeah. and I were coming down the escalator, and we saw her, and we were like, oh, fuck. We couldn't turn around to run I up the I didn't know stairs. who she was, and then you noticed, oh, my God. And she goes, hey, Chris? And you're like, oh, my God. And I knew right off the bat. You were oh. like, no, go. But, yep. but 
you're the champion. Yeah. Because I'm going to tell you what happened at the hotel. <laughs> tell you, I got a great story at the fucking hotel, man. So we check in. We're at this like, like little rinky-dink hotel. I remember like where they stored the cars because she drove us. It was like this, like this empty building. They brought in like a freight elevator and a car because yeah. you forgot you forgot something out of your suitcase or some shit. I think your dippity do or something. I can't remember. <laughs> but anyhow, we get to this hotel and they got these little narrow hallways. And and all of a sudden, you look at me and you take her by the hand. And you go, "Let's go." Yep. And I go, "What?" It was and you a take deal. Take her down to her room. Yep. And there's, I'm like, "What the fuck is going on?" And I'm like, hanging out in the hallway, and the maids. Are going down the going down the hall, you know, taking care of the rooms, and I hear her screaming. She's going, oh, oh, oh! She's down. I hear her screaming. I see the like these Hispanic maids are reacting and they're laughing their ass off. <laughs> you hear all the way through the hotel, and then you come back and you're like, "Yep, I fucked her in the ass." <laughs> I go, "What?" I go, "What?" But that they was go, the yeah, plan. I, I, it was all yeah, planned. I, I told her, I'm going to I'm gonna grab you by the hand, I'm going to take you to the hotel room, yeah. I'm going to stick her with your ass. Yeah. Dude. And you did. Yeah. But she was from... And, ju- and then what happened later from, in the week? She was from... Later like, in the week. Yeah. She... W- w- I can't remember if it was the same night we were out with, like, Craig Gass yeah. and Rich Boss. Yeah, yeah. I can't remember. But I know I know Craig Gass was with us. We're at yeah. McDonald's. Yep. <laughs> If she wanted to do a three-way with you, me, and Craig Gass. Yeah. And Craig Gass was like, dude, I'm out of here. Yeah, he's like, I'll see you guys later. (laughs) So she went to the bathroom, and we're in Times Square. This is the McDonald's in Times Square, the big one. And we ran. And you and I, you look at me, you go, let's go. Yeah, we we ditched her. Let's go. Yeah, we ditched her. We go back to the hotel. I don't know, maybe it's like, what, 45 minutes later, an hour later. Yeah. We're hanging out in your room. We're here and knock at the door. She opens up the door. And screaming like, at us. Fuck you guys. I yeah. fucking hate you. Yep. And she's looking at us and she goes, I could have been raped. <laughs> <laughs> yep. And like the whole rest of the week we're there. You and I looked at each other and go, I could have been raped. Yeah. Well, I banged her so, that night. That was the night you oh, were in the night, room. Yeah. Yep. And I had a little disposable camera. I'm like yeah. taking Gord- pictures. Gordon had the little the little like half cardboard camera and he was like I'm banging her, and he's like at the end of the bed, like shaking the bed and taking pictures and shit. That that camera and is and it's all dark room, and you just yeah. see a flash going on. Yeah, she didn't care. And she's hammered. She's like, "What's going on?" You're like, "Never mind." And you just happen. <laughs> you're just going to Pound Town. Yeah, she loved it though. The, the greatest, the greatest thing though was like the next day we told Jim Florentine, and Jim Florentine met her like the night before at the comedy <laughs> at the Caroline's. <laughs> And he yeah. said the greatest fucking line. He goes, yeah, the flash is going off. And she kept on going, what's that flash? And she <laughs> goes, she probably thought it was a refrigerator door opening. <laughs> yeah, the refrigerator. You know what? Here's a funny story, an inside story about when I uh, was going to Philadelphia. So uh, I'm in San Antonio, and we're in the middle of talking about going to uh, uh, the Philadelphia so I get a call from Tim Sabian, and he's on speakerphone. He's running, well, he's running uh, all the rock stations for that company. And he calls yeah. up, and he goes, hey, man, yeah, so, you know, we're, we're going to bring you here and all that stuff. We just hired some other talent for the radio station, too. Uh, and I'm like, oh, okay. And we're on speakerphone. And he goes, uh, do you know DC from Jersey? <laughs> and I go, yeah. <laughs> and then everybody in the room just started laughing. <laughs> laughing because <laughs> i guess my buddy spike told her all about or told him all about how i banged her and shit <laughs> oh i was that was like a nightmare i was going to my dream job and to think that she could be working in the radio station they never hired they never even got close to hiring her though right no i mean i, I don't even think they knew who that was really but uh i don't know where she is now i mean she's falling off the face of the earth I mean, I think she's dead. Honestly, I know. Um, wow. I know in Philadelphia, the uh, the guys that were on after us, um, Scotty and Alex, knew who she was. But I mean, I have to ask them if if she's dead or not. I think she's dead. Wow. Yeah. So how do yeah, you feel? Yeah, Chris used to clean up all the time. Chris, I used to meet Chris down in New York City. And he always was like pick up some broad man. Mm. Remember Selly? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah, Gordon the hottie was... in time. I'm like watching artwork, and you're like 15, 20 minutes. Chris is like sitting there stopping all these girls walking by. This is middle of daytime in front of the M&M store. Yeah, and but... Literally stopped, I, them, stopped I, them a girl. Yeah, that and was... She's in, I mean... And she's in town because she's a reenactment actress, and yeah. she's going to be on Maury Povich. I fucked her. So, I, fu- I had sex with her yeah. in, in the butt. That night? No, well, was it that night? No, it was the was next it... the next time I went to Texas, but or to uh, yeah, to but New didn't York. you like pull a plum out or some shit? Yeah, it got messy, but uh, yeah, yeah, she was really <laughs> sweet though. Yeah, but she wanted to be a swinger. She would tell me about how uh, she <laughs> she would go to like uh, these dark alley <clears throat> clubs uh, in New York City and just get gangbang and shit. And I'm like, Holy okay, fuck. yeah, but you know. I was living at my mom's house in Syracuse, just going, "Oh, that's cool, man!" And I would just take trips down, <laughs> down there and have sex with her to go back with my mom. <laughs> yeah, that was a crazy time. Yeah, it was fun. That though. was so that was so funny. That one night at a hotel, you guys about getting. In, you, you, I remember we all had the you and I had the room, and I left, and you guys are like practically getting it on in the stairwell. Like, what? Yeah, I'm yeah. Like, I'm, the, go back, use the fucking hotel room. Yeah, the stairwell at the hotel. That was fun, man. That was, I mean, that was years ago. But that was C. Diddy. Yeah, yeah, that was. I don't drink like that. My body is built by that, but I don't drink like that anymore. You and I would get drunk and just fucking ruin everyone's Times Square photos and fucking photo bomb. Oh, I got pictures dude. Of them, by the way. Yeah, you know what? And it's a funny thing. I just found pictures of me pulling my dick out and chasing uh, Beetlejuice around at one comedy club in Syracuse. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I got I have... pictures of you pulling your balls out the girls <laughs> in the back. <laughs> big bold on ball. Yeah, I would pull my balls out and chase people around. Uh, <laughs> that was the shit, man. I, that you know, was the shit. It's funny because the last one of the last times I went back to Syracuse to visit, I went out to this place called Sylvan Beach, and that was mm-hmm. where we would go and just get drunk at the the little bars there and and hook up. And now it's a ghost town. It's really sad. It is really sad. And yesterday's Royal hasn't opened back up yet, or like our, our number one hangout. Yeah, yesterday's Royal was funny. It was a bar in, uh, on the beach uh, up there in Syracuse. and uh, It's been around since like 18, like 72. Yeah. And, and the guy there, the guy that was like the bouncer was like a meathead. So I had a fake ID. So you just show it to him once. And then you, you I've learned that you make jokes and you be a friends with the bar guy, the front door guy. So when he yeah. sees you. He's like, oh, what's up, man? Go on in, go on in. Yeah. And then you, you know, so that's it. You just show your fake ID once. And, I mean, we were like 19 years old, and we would go there and get fucked oh, up and just bang. We so fucking sloshed. Yeah, I banged. I mean, it was always married chicks that were out with their friends, like girls night Jojo? out. Jojo? Jojo, yeah. the counter from Rochester? Yeah, yeah. Jojo was some married chick, and I banged her yeah. in the hotel. And then... And then uh, one of our friends banged her on a on a uh, a boat. Yeah, our friend. The next day, I showed up at Sylvan Beach and I found out our buddies, three of our buddies, banged her on his boat. <laughs> our friend. And she was married. Go, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I go. Was she with this girl? I'm like, my friend banged her last night in the beach. But the funny story was. Yeah. That you told her your name was Kevin. Oh no no. Well that's yeah that's right. My my fake ID said Kevin because our buddy Kevin Pease gave me his old ID. Yeah, and, and you I would use like. yeah I would use Kevin to get in the bars, and then yeah. I always thought the name Larry was funny, so yeah. people would ask me my name. I go, oh, it's Larry. <laughs> so yeah. everybody thought my name was either Kevin or Larry, and I remember <laughs> walking to the beach with her to go have sex on the beach, and, and me, and, me and me and our friend Tony. Well, you and your you know, friend, you and Tony went to the bar to watch us on the patio, and yeah. I was walking to the beach, and these two people got out of their car, and I go, hey, what's up, Chris? And I, oh, I go, oh. <laughs> and she goes, I thought your name was Larry. <laughs> and then I- And then you're banging her on the beach. We had the whole back deck of yeah, the beach club. And Gordon, and, and Gordon and my friend Tony brought everybody out on the back patio to cheer us on. Yeah, and it was like the middle of the night, and you're like banging on the beach. And literally, Chris gets up, he pulls up his pants, and he's like, get the fuck out of here. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was so hilarious, dude. God, I, I, honestly, I miss that shit. Dude, dude, there's <laughs> so many stories with you. And remember Edith? Mm. You got to remember Edith. She was like 50-something. That, yeah, that was the chick uh, in 
you banged her on like this old seventies like yeah, console. It was like, it was like an air con- you know, a big air conditioner record player or some shit. Yeah. Yeah, and yeah, I'm we- in the other room with like this young hot chick. We're talking, and I hear oh oh oh. Yeah, we met them at the. And beach. You come out, you're like, let's go. <laughs> yeah, let's go. I'm like, what's going on, man? We're just we're just hanging out. You're yeah. like, dude, let's go. No, I'm done. I'm done. That was, let's that, go. That's where it like kind of began. Yeah. Oh well, man, your your run was incredible. It was fun. It was it was awesome, I, but I wasn't picky. No. My wife doesn't no, I mean, believe. My wife doesn't believe this shit. We'll be somewhere and she'll pick out somebody and go, "Like, uh, did you ever like have sex with somebody that big?" And I go, "Oh yeah, yeah." yeah. And she doesn't believe me. Well, remember that one summer, you and our our, our like our himbo buddy Rick. I want to say his last name. Good looking dude. You had that contest where you went Hagen. Hagen, yeah, yeah, Rick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, so. yeah, but. But Rick is like fucking good looking still. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. He's a good looking fucking dude. Yeah. Yeah, we had a contest. Hagen. Remember that remember this you like, yeah, last night I was in the McDonald's like drive thru and I met this fat chick and I said, Hey, I'll give you a fry for a blowjob and she goes, Okay. I yep. give her a fry, she blew me. Yeah. I go, What? <laughs> I mean, there's so many stories. I mean, adult world with Lincoln and a backseat. Oh, oh with shit! The swinger chick. I mean, yeah, that was the, that was the older lady. Uh, that was my first time because I used to just go to that adult world place. Now, when I lived in Philadelphia, I told the story about jerking off at adult world, not knowing that there was an adult world in Philadelphia. And then <laughs> this is the greatest radio story ever. So I talked about jerking off in the the video booth at Adult World in Syracuse, and the Adult World of Philadelphia said, that's great. We want to buy advertising. (laughs) So, I mean, that's a true story. I mean, to this day, when I go to Syracuse to visit, I will go to that Adult World and jerk off. Anyhow. Oh, I used to, we used to go to hockey, and I used to keep extra napkins in my glove box. Yeah, in the glove box, right. And I used to let you go in, I wait in the the car. Yeah. Me and Darren. Yeah. Uh, my buddy Darren used to, uh, I mean, he has a job where he would uh, put up duck work and shit in like malls and stuff. And he would go to McDonald's or whatever during the week for lunch. And he would save all the napkins in his glove box because he didn't drink <laughs> because he knew I would get hammered at a bar. Yeah. And then yeah. we'd go to Adult World and he would just give me all his napkins and I would go jerk yeah. off. <laughs> that was like clockwork. Go yeah. To, go to Sister's Crunch hockey game. Yep. Let's go to Adult World. But then there and was like. done. That time where Lincoln and I went to Adult World, and uh, we were leaving with Darren. Darren was driving, and yeah. uh, we're in Darren's truck, and I'm sitting in the middle, and Darren's driving, and because uh, he didn't drink, and then Lincoln was with me, and this couple, this older couple, pulls up next to us at the light after we left, and the lady goes, uh, "Hey, I have a uh, a fantasy of uh, masturbating in front of people. Can you guys help me out?" And I was like, hell yeah, pull over. So we pulled over. And uh, Darren and we Darren parks his truck. Darren and I get in the back seat. And Lincoln is sitting up front with the with the, the husband who was like 60. <laughs> and uh, she's in her like running outfit or whatever. And uh, the old man's driving. And he's adjusting the mirror so he can watch. And she just gets naked and starts playing with herself and stuff. And then. She gets on Darren in like three pumps. Darren's done. And then uh, uh, I fucking was like all oh, fired up. And of course, I get in there and I start doing all kinds of shit and all that stuff. And because uh, I'm a freak. And yeah. within, uh, I was done within minutes easily. And then after that, it was like, okay, let me get your guys' number. She took all of our numbers and then she fucking called my phone at home over and over and over yeah. again. And like an idiot, I was like, oh, man, I'm scared. I don't know. these. They may try to kill me when they just wanted to fuck. <laughs> you know, I had a drummer that used to bang like this older chick. He said she used to look like a net for the cello. And he mm. said all these dudes are like in a room. They were all like gangbanger. And I'm like mm. going, what? And this is like when I was like 18. I love that shit. That it's swinger so shit. That swinger shit is big up there in upstate New York, man. I'm telling you. Um, and then, and then for fun, our friend Darren was a hunter, so he had this, like this, 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 this light that you would plug into your your outlet. Your cigarette your lighter, car. right? 
Yeah. It was called a million beams of light, and this thing was like, I mean, you probably get arrested if you put this up. You know, you point it at airplanes. That's how that's how powerful it was. And we would there was Adult World, yep. and then there was Boulevard Books, yes. which was the gay hangout. Yeah, where all the gay guys would hang out, right? And it was all crews in the back, <laughs> and we would go in the back and they put the light on. Them. <laughs> I put the light on him, and you'll see some like gay dudes with their bare ass coming up over the back seat. Yep. It was fucking hilarious. Yeah, yeah, blowing each other and shit. Oh my fucking Do god! Do you remember that time we were hanging out at Lincoln's house? It was the summertime, and we decided to go up to Adult World, and we just went inside. Nothing happened, really. and we were leaving, and we drove around the back. And that one dude was just sitting in his car, but in the passenger seat, and he had no clothes on. And yeah. we drove, we drove by, and we all looked at the guy, and then Lincoln goes, <laughs> "I mean, Lincoln was the funniest motherfucker on the planet," and yeah, he just he, he just goes, "That guy's fucking naked." <laughs> <laughs> Just to paint the picture, our friend Lincoln was like uh, 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 Michael. Uh, uh, I was just in the movie, The Fallen Down. Oh yeah, Lincoln no, was he like was, the real life Fallen Down character. Uh, easily, easily, and he was one of the. Easily, it was so fun to drive around with him because he was so laid back, oh. and he be he would just kind of like I worked with him at Wegman's at the grocery store, and he would just yeah. be like, "Hey man, what's going on?" He'd be cool, laid back. <laughs> one of the best drummers there. He was a jazz drummer. Yeah, and then, great drummer. Yeah. And then uh, I'd, he'd get behind the wheel of a car. He'd be so laid back, and he'd get behind the wheel of a car, and he would be like, get the fuck out of the way! He'd start <laughs> screaming at people and shit. It was hilarious. One of the I funniest. I used to play with him, and he'll be, like, leaving his house, and his parents go, Lincoln, you want any beef stroking off? And, and like, he would be like, no! no! <laughs> and they would just leave. What the fuck's going on, man? Yeah, he would, he would scream at his parents and shit. But and he was so were like so cool. His dad they was were like, so nice. His dad was oh like uh, his dad was like Tommy Chong. He was laid back and just cool. Yeah, drummer, and, was, and he was a musician, right? He was just like a regular laid back guy, but he fucking just was annoyed with his parents. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Lincoln. He was the fucking God, best. Lincoln Tubbs. I know Lincoln Tubbs. That was that was the thing. I worked at the grocery store bringing in carts, and they go, uh, yeah, we got this new guy, Lincoln, uh, starting with us. His name's Lincoln Tubbs. And I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> <laughs> but he was the coolest dude on the planet. Anybody, uh, just like the radio show, anybody who was, like, socially unacceptable, I liked. And a guy named Lincoln Tubbs. Yeah. That's a guy that's socially unacceptable. So we would just sit around and talk about pussy. <laughs> pussy and, and weird stuff like best taste in soda. Yeah, yeah, right. Soda, where to get a good sandwich. Uh, he would call me up and just be like, uh, he would just start singing like Belle Bid DeVoe songs to me and shit. <laughs> that's the coolest motherfucker ever. I don't know what happened to him either. Oh, you got to find Lincoln Tubbs. God, that was, I mean... Uh, honestly, I wish I could just go back. I mean, it sucks now. <laughs> yeah, it does, it does suck for you. Mm. For show. Man. For yep. show. For show. The only thing I look forward to t tonight was I was able to go into the hot tub and listen to my wrestling podcast without being bothered. And Which I was one? like, it was uh, Eric Bischoff. Um, oh, okay. Uh, let's see which one it is here. Hold on. He was uh, it was he was doing a watch along. Uh, Super Brawl five six seven eight. Super Brawl eight. Hold on. All right, there it is right there. My buddy uh, Conrad. That's the one I'm listening to. I'm in the middle of it. It's a two out. It's a two and a half hour podcast. Uh, I'm not happy that it's that long, but. Um, it's a it's a good one. That's all I have to look forward to in life. I love that old school. I, I love the old school wrestlers doing their podcast. Dude, you know anybody watch it? Gordon's got some great pictures. Like one time we were in high school. I mean, Gordon was like, uh, we were in like seventh or eighth grade, and Gordon's parents would drop him off at the Syracuse War Memorial to go to wrestling. I go to my grandma's. Yeah, and he would like go and like the Macho figured, Man. Would... I figured out where they came and went, so I would like hang under the bleachers. Yeah. And then Miss Elizabeth would come out, and Gordon would like grab her boob and stuff. 
I remember that. I feel awful. He's all dead now. Yeah, but then he's got like pictures of like uh, of Ricky like the Dragon Steamboat. Yeah, Ricky Macho Ricky Man. Steamboat. I met he's, them all. He's all bleeding and shit. Yeah, that was our life. That was it. Oh my god, our life was Van Halen and wrestling. Yeah, right. <laughs> All it was. And then, and then, and then, when you started working on radio, you got every single one of their numbers. I remember you just go to my house and you would just call them. Non-stop. Oh, dude, I I I interviewed uh, not too long ago. Uh, uh, what's his name there from uh, America's Funniest Videos? Uh, uh, fuck, who's that? The host now, the, the, Carlton. You're talking about uh, yeah. Alfonso Ribeiro. Yeah, Alfonso Ribeiro. And I told him, I go, hey man. I gave your number to my friend Gordon. He would just call you and eat chips while fucking prank calling you. Eat chips and, and, and apples. <laughs> well, this is Will. And he will get all quiet and goes, This ain't Will. <laughs> but that was back when, like, nobody paid attention to him. You know, no he's most, a super. Yeah, George, George Decay. Yeah, he's. Oh, Orville George. Redenbacher. Yeah, Orville. Remember I used to call Orville Redenbacher oh, all the time? Orville, we would just call up and fuck with him, and he would just go. Orville Redenbacher, the guy that created popcorn, we would yeah. call him and fuck with him no matter what time in the morning. And he and would he just would go. stay on the line for like an hour. And just talk about and talk about how he created popcorn. And we're like, and dude. Fla- we'll give him <laughs> ideas for different flavors of popcorn. <laughs> and then one time I go, you should make a salmon flavor. He's like, Fish? <laughs> oh, dude, no, it won't laugh. Yeah, the guy was like 100 years old and we're pranking him in the middle of the night. And he's talking to us but about he, fucking popcorn. But he had he had all these like the, like these women. There were like these care nurses that would like put him in his hot tub. He was I gotta go. Yeah, the girls are gonna bring me in a hot tub now. That, and you're that, thinking like, holy shit. That was the thing. We we had all these like C grade celebrity phone numbers from like me interning at a radio station, and we would just fuck with them. And I mean, just fucking with George Takai. And then years later, he became a superstar because of those tapes. Dude, people don't, people have no clue how many times you called George. Oh, fuck, you called him all the fucking time. All the fucking time. <laughs> Dude, Chris used to call these like these these celebrities that were like go- like no one wanted to interview like Leonard Nimoy. Mm-mm. There was a time when people didn't want to interview Leonard no, Nimoy. They were all uncool, but they were and cool Chris, in my world. Chris would call conference them with my mother. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I like have Leslie a tape. Nielsen, he called conference my mom with Leslie Nielsen. Yeah. And Leslie Nielsen literally yelled at my mom because my mom was a very, like, jovial, you yeah. called me. No, yeah. you called me. Yeah. And basically, I, what he said, you go to fucking hell. Yeah. Like, fuck yeah. <laughs> we would just fuck with these celebrities every night over and over and over again in, in Kansas. It was a fucking, it was the Wild West. Nobody cared. And uh, yeah. it was so, it was so great. Uh, I remember uh, my buddy uh, Puck from the real world. He would call in, collect from jail. Yeah. And every night he would call in my night show. And then he gets out of jail and he starts living with one of the old drummers of fucking uh, Jimi Hendrix. And and he was living there. Oh, and you know Mitch Mitchell? One of them. I don't remember what it was. So I called him up and... Uh, it might have been Mitch, and he answers the phone, and I go, hey, man, is Puck there? And he starts fucking going off and goes, that motherfucker stole all this shit from me and all that shit. And then, and then Puck ended up calling in. I go, hey, man, what? <laughs> you pissed off the guy from, from fucking Jimi Hendrix band. He goes, man, fuck that guy. I took this. I took that. <laughs> it was all this drama with a bunch of nobodies on my show. <laughs> <laughs> I remember you wanted me to meet up with him at Woodstock '99. You're like, you yeah, at Woodstock '99, go meet up with him. Yeah, because he was there. Everybody was there, but me. Yeah. 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 Man, that was fucked up. Well, those were those were the days. That was uh, the '90s. Were all about, I guess, three things. It was just the radio show, using that to get laid. I mean, AOL was just coming around, so it all worked together. But oh, you were one of the first people with that little Mac laptop and oh, AOL. Oh God, all night long. That's all I fucking did. I, I'm t- yeah, that, that's all I heard. Like, that's, oh, I gotta go, dude. Yeah, that sound of the the message back was just it was a, the sound of my boner. That's all it was. <laughs> now I'm a fucking mess. <laughs> you can blame but, your wife for that. You know, a funny story. I remember I was telling my ex girlfriend. 
at the time. I was like, of course, man, he used to hook up. I used to be a wingman. We used to have to, like, watch him. And she goes, why did he ever get married? And literally without missing the beat, I go, his wife probably gave him anal. She gave me, she gave me anal, anal once. His wife probably gives him anal. And my, without missing the beat, my girlfriend's like, okay, that's understandable. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's when you marry. Yeah. Man, I'll All tell right. you. But let's be honest. I mean, I'm 47 years old. If I was still going out and doing this shit, I'd be that guy that we used to goof on at the bar. Oh, yeah, I know. I know. Yeah. That. You, know, you can't fucking do that shit. No, but I would love to. Holy fuck. Too old for the club. <laughs> the of course, club. all the clubs in Syracuse are shut down. Yeah, all, all the clubs in Syracuse. There was this club in uh, Syracuse called uh, the Country Club. And one night, Gordon and I, it was uh, an all ages night. We're like, oh, let's fucking go. And, yeah. uh, and we went, and we're st- we stood in line for fucking ever. And then we show the bouncer ID, and he goes, "Man, you guys are too old to be in here." We're like, "What the fuck are you and talking we're like about?" Twenty four. Yeah. <laughs> he goes, "This is like sixteen and over." I'm like, "Yeah, I'm over." <laughs> and he's just laughing at us, like she's fucking hot. He's like, "Man, you guys can't come in here." I'm like, "Fucker, I stood in line." <laughs> oh fuck! I love that shit. Oh, so good. Oh, God. Story after fucking story. I know. That's all I got. I mean, that's the thing is my buddy Blake remembers all this shit. I don't remember all of it because I don't know. You're fucking drunk. Well, I was drunk and I just don't, I just don't remember. It's like, well, I was a horny dude. Uh, Gordon was with me. He had this Jeep Uh, and I hooked up with my friend's sister in the Jeep. And man, that was one of the fucking awesome, the best nights ever. Was hooking up with her. Now, who was that? Scooter? No, yeah. What well, I'll say to that? Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> oh, that was so awesome. I would have married her in a second. Yeah, she came from money too. Oh yeah. Oh shit. Yeah. Anyways, her dad, her her dad built and sold pharmaceutical equipment. Oh was it pharmaceutical? god. Medical equipment. I don't know what oh, it was, god. but they lived in a mansion. And it was awesome. <laughs> and she was you, so. You, you had some hogs and you had some honeys, man. I gotta, that, I gotta admit that. She was so sweet, but I was like, whatever. Uh huh. But man, it was more fun going out and just fucking raging. Checkers. Dude, I just, That's I just level. remember go- working at the grocery store just to get enough money to drink on the weekends. Yeah. And then going and then taking out of the ATM my entire check. To go drinking because all I had to do at home was pay for my phone line and insurance mm-hmm. for my car. That was it. So it was like, well, when you, uh, well, fuck well, it. when, when you started becoming a DJ on the rock station, so it was, it, it got a little crazy. Well, yeah, because I could go on the air and be like, Hey, I'm looking to hook up. Yeah. Here's you got my, some strange. Yeah. And it was like, Hey, AOL, you know, kid Chris at AOL, which still works and all that shit. And it was like, hit me up. And I, I would say that on the air, I would like to do anal and stuff. And girls would hit me up and say, hey, I like that. Uh, and I would and just. You would, you would leave your rubbers in back of the station. And yeah, yeah. I, 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 got, I, got in tr- I got in trouble for that. I would in bang. In the middle of a meeting. Yeah, I would bang. They chicks. brought it up in a, in a meeting. Yeah, Mimi, Mimi brought it up. The program or the fucking. Uh, the operations manager she brought it up yeah. in a meeting I would bang chicks in the studio and it'd just take the rubbers and throw them out the back window <laughs> and it, in the meeting with the, the entire staff she said hey whoever's doing this stop throwing Who's your rubbers you? out the window and everybody knew it was me <laughs> <laughs> oh that's good shit oh you'll get yourself in trouble how many, how many sales girls have you banged through the years uh you had you had an appetite for sales girls. Yeah, I love sales girls. I'm sorry, Lene. Well, she was one. Yeah. There was there was one before There's her. There's a few others. There was only really I, that I remember one before her. Do you remember another one? Wasn't there one with the letter S? Big tits. What's the name? The first name. Sandy. Oh yeah, yeah. But she wasn't a sales yeah. girl. She was a uh, an assistant to the. To the uh, CEO. Okay, okay. Yeah, to the CEO. No, she's cool about it. She wants to talk about it on here. I um, I one day put my dick on her shoulder in the office, and she's. 
<laughs> she started. Chris, Chris dabbled with everybody. There was like a old was it a. What, what was Kay on the Keeler show? What was her well, job title? Well, well, she's dead. Oh, did she really die? Oh. Yeah, yeah. I don't think we should talk about that. Oh, okay. <laughs> In the closet at the club? That was, the, yeah. Well, guys? There, was, there was twice. There was one at a, at a I brought a date to a, uh, to a, <laughs> there was a, <laughs> I brought a date to a, um, a wedding I actually I brought the girl you talking about, but I put my dick on her shoulder. No, no. Yeah. Actually, I brought I brought another girl that worked at the radio station office. Uh, hold on, I'll say her name. Hold on a second. Okay. You remember, okay. Yeah, oh yeah, wow. You remember, okay, yeah, you right. remember her? I brought her to. Oh, a, yeah. I brought her to the wedding, and then in the middle of the wedding, I said, "Hey, I gotta go to the bathroom," and I went in the, the clothes closet, and I had uh, I got got it on with uh, yeah, someone you brought up. Uh, yeah, yeah, and then another but you got time. Mouth hug one time in the middle of the night. You're yeah, like, she drove me home. Right. Yeah. Yeah, that was that. Yeah, uh, but that the one I went on a date with to the wedding, uh, the one I talked about there. Uh, her name was. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. one time uh, we were driving. I was driving her home, and uh, or no, she was driving, and she goes, "Hey, take the wheel," and I took the wheel. And while I was holding the wheel and driving down a highway, yeah, she yeah. Leaned, she leaned over and started giving me a blowjob. Yeah, yeah. I I, I remember you telling me that. Yeah, that was awesome. God, Jesus Christ. yeah, I miss that shit. See, my wife treats me like shit. If she hear if she hears these stories, she'll fucking understand. She has I got, no clue. We're just yeah. tipping the surface. Like I can't even. I have to have. I have to go, go, go through notes. Yeah, I have fucking game. <laughs> <laughs> dude, dude, what's your number, seriously? Because John Mayer once said he's over five hundred. You got to be like three. I don't know. I've never, I've, I've never counted because I didn't care. I just, it was always a turn on for me if a chick just was cool and wanted to fucking hook up. Yeah. It was never about like, oh, I don't know, she's not hot, she's not this. It was like, hey man, let's just fucking have fun. There's a guy in the chat goes, I love hearing these old war stories. They're not war stories. It was, it was fun. It was, yeah. no, it was, it, we, it, we never dissed anybody or anything like that. It no. was just, it was just no. fun. Let's fucking get drunk and have fun. No, the greatest. Yeah. Never, I never fucking like trash somebody or anything like that. It was always fucking, it was always fun. We, the only people we trashed were people that were fucking bitches to us in high school. <laughs> yeah, or dicks. Yeah, and we never but, fucking we never went out looking for trouble. It was always like, uh, "Hey, man, let's have fucking fun to get drunk." There was a little, there was a little time at the high school though. Like all of us would hang out. Remember in Canastota at the Bears Den, the yeah, Roadhouse. That was great. It was great, and you know, and uh, no one would fuck with us because it would be like two hundred of us. Yeah, so that was like, the thing. There was a, there was this guy named uh, Davin that would hang out with us. Um, at that club, yeah. at that club checkers, and he was like a tough guy and shit, and he was yeah. just a drunk. But fun. Yeah, he was fun, and when he was around, it was like no one's gonna fuck with us. So let's go get drunk and dance on the dance floor and have fun, because the problem was is sometimes guys would get drunk and they'd be like, if a girl would talk to one of us or whatever, they'd be like, hey, fuck this guy. They would get mad and shit. Yeah, yeah. But, it, but if Davin was Yo. there, there was no trouble. <laughs> <laughs> because, you know, here's the thing. Here's the thing. Chris was really funny, so That's, it was just the, about the comedy and the it, funny would win the girls over. Yeah, and guys would get mad. And he, Chris would be out there dancing with girls, and it wasn't about the moves. He was just fucking having fun. I remember yep. one time he brought he knocked the fucking lights down mm. from the fucking ceiling at this club checkers. He totally knocked the fucking lights down. Yeah, I told I've told that story on the radio. I pulled the light fixture down, but I won the dance contest that night. But people were yeah, mad. but you won the night. Yeah, and then you went home with Anne. Yeah, I had sex with Aunt, well, I had sex with her the next day when I was sober. Yeah, and that's when yeah. I shit I shit on the floor. Yeah, <laughs> the best. And. That's the best. Where Gordon Gord just goes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So I know, I know. So yeah, shit happens. Yeah, yeah. Uh, listen again. She was cool. She was down to have fun. That's yeah, all she it was. was. My, she was that, fun. That was it. You know, I don't care. My, my my wife doesn't understand that. It's like everybody was just fun. It was cool. You know, 
I, nobody hurt anybody else and all that shit. It was just and fucking... when we would go to like the cool clubs, like the country club, we would just fuck with the girls because they're like you know we ain't gonna... right. That was we the never thing. Up the we I never hooked up at like these other clubs in Syracuse because everybody there thought their shit didn't stink. So we yeah. would just go so we there. Would just we would just go there and get drunk. Way. Yeah, we would just fuck with people. That's all it was. Excuse me, you dropped something. Yeah, we like would just tell people they... Night. Yeah, they, they would just go up to people and go, hey, you dropped something. And, and we would just get a scream out of them going, oh, I did? Oh, where? And we just, ah, And they would turn you. around looking yeah. at that shit. <laughs> and they would just laugh hysterically. And they would fucking look like, what the fuck is wrong with you guys? Yeah. <laughs> and, you know, and you know, that 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 fucking thing started that night when I was hammered. And we're at that one club, the Too Cool For You Club down in like Armory Square. It's like this downtown Syracuse. And I was fucking lit, and I got up in a bar, and I go, Wu-Tang forever! <laughs> and some, like, liberal, like, white girl goes, I don't think so, buddy. <laughs> and the whole fucking night was just fucked with everybody. Yep. I think that was New Year's Eve. Yeah, you know, yeah, there was twice. New Year's Eve, we went out. Here's the cool thing. Like, when I worked at K-Rock in Syracuse, they hooked all their DJs up with this thing called uh, I'm Smart. Mm-hmm. And it was... It was in the 90s and it was way before uh uber and all that shit and it was it was this great thing where you go to a bar you drive to a bar and you get fucking hammered and you call this plate this you have a card and it would have like your account number on there and it was called i'm smart and you'd call the number and go hey i'm fucking hammered can you take me home and two people would show up one person would show up and drive your car home and the other person would drive you home. And it was awesome because the radio station knew we would do these club gigs and all we would do is just get fucking blitzed. So they took care of their DJs. They said, we'll get you an I'm smart card and have you guys have an account and all that shit. And it was fucking awesome. Those were the ghost logger years. Yeah, that was fucking bad. But it was going to, it was Zoo Station in Syracuse and we would just get fucking blitzed out there. And then I'm Fucking smart. Gone. <laughs> Fucking gone. I, I just remember like the horrible snowstorms being driven home and me just yakking yeah. outside. Oh, there was a time where Gordon and I went out and got fucking blitz the night before. And then the next morning we had to go to New York so I could go do the Stern show. Oh, great. Yeah. And I, my mom is driving me to the airport, and I was like, Mom, pull over. And I pulled over yeah. and threw up all over the fucking road. And I was like, yeah. all right, let's go. <laughs> yeah. and you're, hey, you're good to go. Yeah, I was ready. We had to go to New you're York. You're good to go, man. Yeah. <laughs> pulled over right off the main room on a chitin angle. Yeah, good to go. Threw up. All right, let's go, Mom. Yeah. We got on jet blue balls and just went to New York City. Buddy. Yeah. If people only knew. Just twenty, sitting there on the Stern show talking about all kinds of bullshit. If they knew only about eight hours beforehand, my mom was driving me to the airport and I was throwing up on the side of the road. <laughs> if they only knew. Oh my god. Well, I gotta Hilarious go, shit. Gordon. I went way over, but it's good hearing from you. Man. I love yeah, this shit. Yeah, that's good. And we're just touching the surface. I know. I was just going to say, keep notes because my friend Blake loves to hear I know, these stories. Cobra. I know. I listen to him. I go, man, he doesn't even have half of the fucking stories. I don't even know. I mean, I and I don't remember because to me, it's just me going out having fun. I mean, if other people think it's funny, then we'll just keep telling them, I guess. Yeah. And some dude just sent me a bunch of naked pictures of his neighbor. Hold on. He said, thanks for taking my call. This is my hot neighbor I'm drilling. And she is fucking like model hot. And it's really? All, yeah, it's all nude pictures. What, what, number wow. you call, what number are you calling in on? Can you get a text from that number or no? Well, just email them to me. All right, I'll email them. Yeah, my email. Yeah, this chick is fucking really hot. No wow. shit. Yeah. Okay, I'm okay with this. Man, she's wow. like fucking model hot. All wow. Right. Yeah, I'll send them to you. All right, dude. Yeah, I won't keep you. Your show's been fucking hopping. I sent you an email today, man. I'm just really fucking pumped. Did you get my email back? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Interesting yeah. shit coming. Yeah. It'll be fun, That's though. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> All right, dude. Later. All right, buddy. All right. All right. Have a good night, buddy. All right, bye. There goes. Uh, That's my friend Gordon. I grew up with him.
I moved to uh, Syracuse, well, Chittenango, New York, when I was in, uh, I think it was seventh grade. And Gordon was the only one that would talk to me and hang out with me and shit. And, uh, I mean, fuck. What was that? What's seventh grade? 14, 13 years old? So I've known him forever. And he was always there hanging out and shit. And it was always fun. Now, Gordon is one that would always just hook up with hot chicks and shit. Um, which is fine. But I was like, let's just get drunk and have fun and all that stuff. But that's why I look the way I do. He doesn't. He's not gray and bloated like I am. So that is just uh, proof that uh, drinking and, and, and like I didn't do any drugs and shit, but just drinking and partying and just being a fucking complete disaster does not pay off in the end. But they're good stories. I hope you enjoyed that shit. I was supposed to be off 40 minutes ago. But listen, uh, yes, what is this right here? Turd under the bed. Yeah, Gord knows that story. Hopefully he remembers other shit. I'll tell I'll tell anything. You know that. It's funny. And everybody was cool about it. Man, there was this girl that the bar he was talking about, Checkers. We used to go there every weekend. And I was underage. And it was only because the morning show I was an intern on, I went there and uh, th they had a bar gig that night. So I went there knowing that Checkers, this is close to my house. I'm going to come here a lot. So I just was friends with the owner, Ted. He looked like uh, the cowardly lion on uh, on uh, 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 Wizard of Oz. So I told him that, and he was fucking thought that was hilarious. And every time I see him, he go, "Put him up, put him up." So I was friends with the owner, and the bar, the 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 the, the uh, bouncer guys were fucking like, "Hey man, what's up?" Oh, they would be like, "K Rock." So we would just walk in. I was 19 years old and I would just get fucking blitz at that place. But man, there was this girl, Angela. I'm friends with her till this day. And she was a chick. She was an Italian chick that would show up at the bar. And if anybody disrespected her, she was a tiny little fucking hot chick. She would beat the fucking piss out of them. She owned that bar. She was like Ronda Rousey before Ronda Rousey. And I was like, oh, she's fucking hot. I love her. And man, we hooked up. I fucking, I was amazed. To this day, I tell her all the time. I, like, I see her on Facebook. You're so, oh, so amazing. <laughs> Anyways, I got to fucking bounce out of here. It was good hearing from Gordon. I don't know how to end this, so uh, we'll just bounce. But dude. We went a little bonus extra shit here tonight. Names were said that shouldn't have been said, but it's all good. Um, what is that? All right, man. AEW tomorrow. Is it tomorrow? Yeah, Wednesday night. Yeah, true. I usually walk. I'm all fucked up because Monday I was off. Anyways, listen, it was good. It was a good time tonight. I'll uh, I'll leave you and uh, see you tomorrow, okay? And don't forget, kidchris.tv. You can watch this replay later on, okay?